blessed to uh, know him and to be in business with him every day. So, Gusty, welcome. Hi, good morning. Hey, Brian. <laughs> hey, good morning, everybody. Brian, thanks for um, joining us this morning. It seems like it's so early since we all have new uh, routines, even though I've been up for hours. <laughs> Well, I've been up uh, hours with the kids, yeah. so um, so it's this is this is pretty typical. <laughs> <laughs> so, Brian, tell us what is going on in the investment world right now. You've got a lot of content that you've been putting out, and uh, all really good stuff. You know, kind of tell us, you know, how are people feeling about um, the market from the investment side? Yeah. Well, first and foremost, thank you so much, Jenny and Gusty, my two favorite realtors in Birmingham. I appreciate y'all having me on. <laughs> Um, I have a very unique, um, maybe ability or opportunity to hear from people from all throughout the country. Um, I do podcasts and shows, so I've had just really great perspective over the past few weeks to hear from some of the best of the best. And then obviously the people that are right here in Birmingham as well. And I consider myself more of a connector and more of a facilitator, um, than I do, um, investor. Thankfully, I've sold almost everything I had up before all this stuff started happening. So oh, that's good. great timing on my part, maybe. <laughs> but um, what we're hearing right now is, you know, the, the big concerns were, are people going to be paying rent? Um, that's that was like the number one concern that I was hearing heading into, you know, April 1st. Um, I'm glad to report that everything I'm hearing is the rents are being paid for April. The concern, though, is for May in June and beyond, but everything is kind of status quo right now. Um, as far as investing goes, actually like buying, um, buy and hold type of properties, especially here in Birmingham, people are still buying. Um, their criteria, their numbers have gone down, but they are still buying. Um, and the fix and flip market here in Birmingham is still moving, is still moving forward with right. a lot of reluctancy and with a lot of caution. So that's kind of like a 30,000 foot overview of what I've been hearing and what I've been seeing, not only in Birmingham, but throughout the country. Well, I know I told my husband, we we have a flip right now that's under contract that should close April 30th. And, uh, you know, we had um, two offers on the first day that it hit the market. So, and that was just last week. So we know that people are, are still interested in buying um, houses that are completely redone. And it, it, did, it did go over asking. Now we have the home inspection tomorrow. So we'll see, <laughs> we'll see how a buyer might flip on that. But I told him, I'm like, we, I, I'm grateful that we don't have rentals right now because I was worried about, you know, people not paying as well. I mean, you know, um, with so much uncertainty, uh, I can see that that might be, I wouldn't want to be put in the position to have to collect right now. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think, I think that's a short term um, kind of way to look at it, honestly. It is. Um, and, and I get it. I understand there's, there's super concern right now about people, you know, I mean, record unemployment, uh, people filing for un unemployment. Can they even, you know, afford to pay the rent? Um, what's, what is going to happen? But what, here's what we do know. This cannot sustain itself. It can't. If, if, if this continues like this for the next six months, even we're not going to have an economy. So the, the, it's there's it's impossible. Like, hopefully our leadership is not going to even allow that to happen. Um, this this is not a long term thing. So as far as like rents go, I actually think right now, if you are considering investing, I know you're you know, I'm trying to like speak more to your audience. If nice. you've ever considered investing, if you ever consider that that aspect of real estate, I think cash flowing properties is the way to go right now. The fix and flip stuff, I think you're going to be okay for the next month or two because you're going to see that, you know, kind of residual effect of what it was already happening. Things aren't right. just going to like just fall off the, the face of the earth. I, I've been hearing from people that multiple offers, over asking price, serious buyers are still out there needing a place to live. I'm, I'm hearing all that across the nation, but that is probably not going to be sustainable long, for the next three to six months. That might be till fourth quarter 2021, where the fix and flip market really gets back going. Again, this is stuff I'm hearing, by the way. Sure. Yeah. Um, but cash flowing properties, though, I, I think that that if, if you are wanting to get into real estate today and you can find something where you're buying it at a discount, which right now there is discounted real estate out there today. If you're oh. buying at a discount, 
Maybe you can't get it rented for the next three, six months, but you've gotten such a great deal on it. You can spend that time rehabbing it, getting it fixed up, getting it ready to rent for when things you know start to get back to a little bit of normal. Well, um, we do have uh, an Airbnb property and but a lot of our stuff got canceled. Then uh, it replenished and then canceled again. So um, we have a, a lot of vacancies. Um, it's it just to be expected, of course. So um, the way that um, the mortgage companies are working, though, like with that, because we do have a loan on it. Um, we bought it for cash and refinanced it and or financed it. And then um, they're working. The mortgage company is understanding these things. You just send them the cancellations and um, they are working with us. So. Yeah. Yeah, I think the hospitality, you know, I put Airbnb in there with the hospitality and, and you know, event, even events and that, that kinds of things. They're getting crushed mm -hmm. and it's going to be a very long time for that aspect of it to get back to normal. Um, I think um, I'm hearing things right now where events are being canceled that were scheduled for October, November, December. They're canceling them. So oh, wow. there's there's a lot of things, you know, and when events get canceled, people are going to have PTSD with this stuff. I'm getting out, um, you know, doing an Airbnb or getting out and going to a hotel and just just traveling in general, I think is going to it's already it already has it's gotten crushed. It's going to continue to have some sort of residual effect for, I yeah. think, the rest of the year. That's my opinion. Well, but what you're hearing is um, and do you think I'm sorry, that <laughs> Go ahead. you're fine? Go ahead. Um, do you think so, with uh, do you do you see more of the investors move towards the um, Airbnb? I mean, move away from Airbnbs and just go into. Gus, so you're breaking up there. Was the question? Do I see investors moving away from Airbnbs? That was that what the question is. Correct. Yes. Um, short term. Yes. Long term. I, I mean, it was so hot and it was so real and the, the returns were so, I mean, people, it will get back to normal eventually. Um, but in the short term, yeah, it's, it's already taken a, a massive, it's been slaughtered and, and it's going to, that's going to continue to happen until, um, you know, a lot of these, these bans and these quarantines are over. And I mean, this could be months. We don't know. There's so much uncertainty today. I would agree. You know, um, a couple months ago, I wanted, you know, 20 of them <laughs> today, <laughs> which, you know, what we're in the way investments go, uh, everything with real estate should be long term anyway. I mean, the 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 fix and flip is, is great for the short term. And uh, that is, like you said, a short sighted look at something <laughs> in an overall picture. But um, what are you seeing on the wholesale side? Wholesaling, mm -hmm. uh, I don't think wholesaling is going anywhere. I, I think if anything, wholesaling is going to continue to get bigger and bigger and bigger. It's such a huge need right now. Uh, properties are being bought at discounts. And there are some buyers that are just like, I'm not buying right now unless it's just like the greatest deal in the world. Well, all that means for a wholesaler is they got to get it even for an even better deal, right? right. And and that's, that is happening. And that's happening today. They're, they're, I hear it's it's just really funny being in, in, kind of in the spot I'm in because I hear a lot of the older investors like, oh, man, this is going to like reset the decks. It's going to like wash away all these pretenders and stuff like that. And I think the wholesalers are the ones that actually have a leg up over anybody else right now because they know how to find a discounted property. And if you know how to look, if. If you know how to find a discounted property, you know how to find discounted real estate, you are never, ever, ever going to be broke because right. there's always going to be people looking for property. And, and you're talking about 07, 08, 09, 10, 11, 12. There were still buyers out there. There's, I was literally on the phone right before this call, I was literally on the phone with one of the biggest hedge funds that are in Birmingham. And there we are full go. Like we're not slowing down at all. We are full systems go. We're still buying. Yeah, we're buying it a little bit cheaper now and being a little bit more careful, but we're looking for as many properties as we were just looking for. So you're always going to have buyers no matter what market you're in. So if you know how to find discounted real estate, and now is probably one of the best times to find discounted real estate, even on the MLS. 
And that's what I'm excited about as someone who has been wholesaling since 2012. So the right way, the legal way, <laughs> and someone who has been, um, been involved in that industry for a long time. Like I'm, I'm doing more, more deals right now than I've done in years because the market is ripe for it. And I think wholesalers are going to flourish. And this is where Jenny and Gussie, this is where I think realtors can have a huge advantage if they would embrace some of these tactics that wholesalers have been using the, the legal way. So wholesalers have been using for, for many, many years because because realtors have the, the, a huge advantage anyway. Well, well I let's think talk getting, about that. Um, let's talk about it. Go ahead. Yeah. I mean, as far as how the um, uh, how realtors can uh, really work well with the wholesalers. I, th I can talk about that for sure, but I think realtors can be the point, the, the place where the, like I, the realtor found the discounted deal. Yeah. So this is where the, if you have listings right now, or you're, you're someone who, who just creates a lot of listings, this is where you have to go back to, yeah, and I understand we have a fiduciary op, you know, obligation to our sellers and we have to make sure that we try to get them as much as they can, but we also have a realistic you know, um, responsibility with our sellers to let them know, hey, here's what's going on in the marketplace. And this is as a realtor since 2015, this is what I've been doing. Every, every appointment I go on is here's what I think we could get for it. If, if you either fixed a couple of things, put it on the market, this is what we could probably get for it. But this is what you could probably get for it from a cash buyer who's willing to come in and, and do the deal immediately. So I kind of give them two options and, and show them, hey, we can do this fast. You're not going to get as much, but it's going to be super convenient, super easy, all closing costs, no fee. Or, well, you know, minimal fees, I should say, things like that. Now, you want to go the route. You want to get as mo much as you can for it. It could sit on the MLS. It could just sit there. Um, buyers are fewer. There are buyers, but there are fewer. So you have to, you have, to have that, um, that conversation, that hard conversation. And as a realtor, if we can have that conversation on our listing appointments that, hey, here's another option. I don't know of any realtors that do that outside of the industry I'm in, the, the specific niche that I'm in. If we can have that realistic that. conversation to show them both ways, then I think that there's, you know, I, sometimes, and this is my opinion, but sometimes realtors get caught up in, well, I'm going to make more commission over here if I get them to list it for as much as, as I can get them to list it for. But to really truly help, which is what we should be trying to do, is let's help the seller and educate the seller as much as we can and show them. But there is an opportunity to sell to a cash buyer um, quickly if that is what you need. I actually do that in all my listing appointments. Um, I'll how, Jenny, how many people, how many do you teach that? How many people, do you know, do that? Um, I don't know that many people do it. We just uh, finished our express offer. So I think a lot more people will be doing it um, with EXP. But um, I've been doing that as, hey, look, here's another option. If you just don't even want to sweep the floor. And you want someone to come in and, uh, uh, um, you know, take this off your hands. You're probably looking at a sales price of this. And I have a list of people that, you know, um, would yeah. come by and uh, uh, just buy it today without any doing one thing at all. Don't even lift a finger. And, you know, every once in a while, you'll have somebody go, okay, <laughs> that sounds great. So I had one in Crestwood last year that um, said, absolutely, I'll do that. Um, uh, I had uh, one, um, uh, it's actually Jared's listing that um, uh, I ended up buying it. He was doing a walkthrough with me with um, through FaceTime. And I'm like, that thing is horrible, man. <laughs> That's going to be a really hard job to sell. Out of town seller, the toilet was just laying in the middle of the living room floor. I mean, it, it just you know. And I said, I'll 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 buy it at this price if he'll go for it, and you won't even have to put it on the market at all. So, um, it, just given those options, like you said, um, uh, people like to hear them, and of course, you'll you can kind of gauge too um, yes. how you can help people because they'll say, um, you know, that's absolutely out of the question you know, this is what I'm going to get, or I'm not going to do anything or, you know, so. Yep. Um, we're doing a ton of um, text messages and emails from uh, uh, the past two weeks um, from uh, wholesalers uh, asking, you know, to buy stuff. So that is really ramped up over the past two weeks. 
Yeah. And it's going, and it's going to continue to get that way. And this is where as realtors, we have to be educated. Realtors have to be educated, understand who is this person? Who is this wholesaler that's going to come in and make this low offer? Do they have the, the, the capability to actually close on it, to buy it? Do, what, are they real? Is, is this a real offer? Because some of these lower offers, especially on the MLS, I'm hearing it and I'm hearing it all throughout the country is that there are people that are just flooding, just making as many offers in the MLS as they can, low offers, as many as they can, as many as they can. And you're going to continue to see wholesalers do that in particular, because what wholesalers have done an incredible job at, especially over the people I teach and coach, especially the people that are are here kind of in my community, um, they have built buyers lists that are massive, massive buyers lists from people, cash buyers, that are ready to go right now. Right. And I understand there's a lot of legalities in there and we can get into that if you want to, but there's a lot of legalities, a lot of, a lot of, uh, you got to make sure you're doing things the right way to be that connector, but there is still a legal way to do it. And if you are a realtor right now and you're getting bombarded with low offers, don't dismiss them, have conversations with these people and tr- try to understand as much as you can, what they are offering, who the buyer is, before you that way you can educate your seller right what their formulas are if you really learn the the formulas for for certain people then you can kind of get a leg up and know where it's going to go and how it's going to work yeah i i I must be on a lot of those lists (laughs) because i I get a bunch of those emails too but so have those realistic conversations with your sellers say hey we're we're getting bombarded with with you know maybe not hard offers, but like kind of like inquiry offers are, is your seller willing to um, sell for a, a, a lesser price at a discount mm-hmm. as long as it's cash, no inspection contingencies, things like that. So I'm just have those hard, the, hard conversations. I'm getting the opposite. People are offering properties to me. Oh, okay. So tell me about that. They're offering properties. So I've had a lot of sell. wholesalers, you know, oh. reach out to me to say, would you be interested in this? Do you want this? Do you want this? I've got this. Do you want this? Um, so, and it's really ramped up the past two weeks. So there's that issue too. That's a, I thought you were talking about a different, a, a good thing. Yeah. That, that is happening a lot because there, there are a lot of, there's a lot of inventory that wholesalers have that they have not been able to sell because now buyers are being more cautious. Their prices have come down. And if your buyer's prices come down, that means as a wholesaler, someone who, who, who you're trying to get discounted property, that means your price has to come down if you want to make any money. So right. there's, there's still that inventory out there where they, had, they already had it at, at the price from a month or, two, month or two ago, and they're trying to offload it and they can't find anyone to buy it. So are you seeing anything different with multifamily? Yeah, I mean, people have got it. So I'm, I'm less in the multifamily space and I will, everything I will, I will say right now regarding multifamily is just stuff that I've heard from people in it. Um, right now, the rents was the, the biggest concern. What are we going to see as far as rents go? Um, I know some multifamily people that are just like, hey, we are buying, we're buyers, we've been prepared for this, we've waited for this, now we're just, now our numbers can come down even more, we get a better deal, and so there are people like that, there's some people that are just like completely shut down, but the number one concern right now is rents. Are people going to be paying rents in the short term? We know the long term is going to be fine, but a lot of these um, multifamily investors, there are loans on almost all those properties. And this is where you said it earlier, Jenny, this is where you have to go back and have those conversations with your lenders and have the, be proactive, have the conversations with your tenants. Hey, are you, have, have you lost your job? Are you, how are you being affected? Literally getting on the phone and calling every one of your tenants. Are you being affected by this? Tell me how you're being affected by it. I, you know, like I said, I have very little property now because I've sold almost everything, but I have one tenant left and I'm on the phone, very proactive. Um, she happens to be in a, she has a job a working for a utility company. Her job is safe. She has not been affected by this whatsoever, but there are people who are in service industries, um, hospitality industries, um, restaurant industries, things like that, where they've just lost, they don't have any income. And so this is where you have to be proactive as, a, as a, any investor but in particular, the multifamily space where you've got so many tenants, you have to get on the phone with them and call them. And then you have to be proactive on the lending side too, calling your, 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 uh, your lender and asking them, hey, is there any relief here? Can, can we postpone some payments? Things like that. 
Gussie, I'm going to let you ask the question. You've been wanting to ask something. <laughs> I think I've already forgot. <laughs> no, I mean, one of the things we were talking about earlier was convenience. And, and I think that, you know, especially with everything that's going on, that uh, and we're also more of in a convenience world. So people are going to be looking for, hey, I've got to sell my house. I don't know what is going to be happening over the next 30, 60, 90 days. So that convenience factor, I believe, is going to come in uh, more than ever. And so those cash um, you know, uh, purchases from investors, I, I believe, is going to be a, 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 a part of our market that's going to increase for sure. Yeah. No, I agree. And it's, it's, we've already seen it and we're already seeing it happening. So, but you're still going to have your retail buyers, but I think right now in the short term, I don't, unless the, you know, your people are, are, have been and still are in a position where they have to move and, and whatever that situation is, like we, we've been actively searching and we're looking and looking and looking, we have to move, but most people don't want to go anywhere right now. Most people can't go anywhere right now. So in the short, short term, we're That's just, right. we're not going to see um, a lot of movement. Yeah, I agree. Um, well, at, we, I mean, you know, obviously we're live right now. If anybody has any questions uh, for Brian, Jenny, or myself, just shoot us uh, a comment. Uh, we appreciate Lori, uh, you know, being on, Meredith, uh, John, Michael, thanks for joining us. So uh, shoot us a message and we'll be glad to uh, answer a question uh, on air. Uh, wanted to talk about um, with everything, all the craziness in the stock market. Do you see um, maybe using IRAs to purchase uh, rental properties uh, increasing? Uh, this is a great question. This is a great topic, Gusty. Yes. Um, and, it's, and it was already happening. But right now, more than ever, we, we, there is more money on the sidelines, not in play. Like they've taken it out of the market and it's just sitting there and they're just waiting. And there are incredible opportunities for um, people who have retirement accounts to start converting some of their retirement. You, know, you can't do this. I, we can't get into the specifics today, but you, you have to have specific types of things, but you can convert your retirement accounts into self-directed accounts. And you can start purchasing real estate today in your retirement account. So yes, absolutely. You're going to see a, a, a huge influx, especially with the, the volatility of the stock market. You're going to see a huge um, uh, just almost like a tidal wave of people using their retirement accounts to where they can self-direct them and buy real estate with them, especially with the prices that we're going to see it at too. Now, I'm not a stock guy, but I also know that stocks are going to come back up, right? I don't know. You know, I'm, I'm again, I can't predict anything. I don't know what's going to happen specifically, but with stocks taking the big hit that they took, they are going to bounce back up. There is going to be a lot of money to be made in the stock market if you're savvy with that as well. Um, yeah, Jay, has, Jay uses his uh, 401k um, an IRA to um, for investments. So uh, it, I can see where a lot more people are going to be doing that for sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I think it's going to be interesting to see as we come across, you know, with all the volatility of that. I, I agree. I, I think stock market's going to uh, go back up. I'm not worried about that. But I just think with sometimes people are going to get scared and they want to diversify a little bit more. And so they might say, all right, so much this account, I take, you know, 30% and I'm going to put it into uh, the, uh, the IRA rate holding piece. And so I think there's going to be more diversification. Um, we had uh, Meredith uh, uh, ask a question. Is there anything we can do as a home inspection company to help you all either with your current clients or even past clients? Is that a question for me? We Jane, don't. Brian, yeah, I think that's a question. For it could be for anybody. Um, I'm not really in the home inspection game. You know, we're I, I help people and I work with people who are buying properties typically as is, and they'll just have their contractor um, go in and take a look at it, and say what needs to be done. So that's probably a question for a realtor, for real realtors, as I call them. <laughs> she actually has a program um, with Jones Warren Home Inspections where she does work for a lot of investors, and it's um, it's a it's a quick check. It's, you know, go through as a quick check. And um, uh, in fact, um, she just did one uh, for us on this uh, townhome. 
uh, just went through, just make sure that it's there because Jay was too busy to, to go check it out himself. And we didn't even look at it before we bought it. So um, it's good to have somebody kind of go in there and it's at a reduced price and uh, you don't get all of the full, you know, blown reports. Um, uh, so she can help you out with that. Well, Meredith, uh, DM me and let me know. Let me know what you can do and I'll <laughs> see if I can point you in the right direction and get you some uh, business. She's so savvy. Well, and and even, she knows where to go and how to get that business. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Well, and even one thing like, do you think this might be better for Jenny? Do you think that people will do more of pre-inspections before listing their homes? You know, I really, um, I keep saying I'm going to do that this year <laughs> and I still haven't um, uh, pulled the trigger on it. Um I, I would like people to. Um, and I know that they're changing around the country doing that. We're a little bit different since, of course, I mean, you know that we're buyer beware. Um, and I, yeah. it's using someone else's inspection that I might have a hard time with as a, you know, a seller. Hey, here it is. We did all the repairs and leave it on the, the kitchen counter and we're not doing anything else. And of course you can have your own inspector. I, I want to so badly to do that. And uh, I, I just haven't done it yet. Well, and I was, I was part of a conversation and um, just talking about different, you know, every, every market is different in how they do things. What are the norms? And in San Francisco, they, uh, the majority of that market is uh, proactive where they do have uh, the pre-inspections, go ahead and get everything ready before they go live where, you know, houses, you know, people are not really worried about the inspection side of things. And I think that especially with everything that's going on, there's probably more, um, accepting of buying a home uh, without seeing it in person with having that pre-inspection done early. So that's, some, that's something to think about. It is. And uh, again, I want, I want to put that in my toolbox. Uh, so thanks for reminding me. <laughs> um, yep, yep, yep. You said earlier, um, and, and Gusty, and I, I stepped on him while he was asking you this question um, and didn't mean to, but uh, you... Um, we're going to go down the road of marketing and finding those, um, you know, those really good discounts and, and, and how realtors probably need to, you know, take a lesson from some of the things that the wholesalers do. So um, can you elaborate a little bit on that? Sure. Well, when it comes to marketing, there's a lot of um, different things that you can do specifically, but um, I think right now everybody's at home. Okay. I don't know if you guys have noticed this, but I have less mail in my mailbox on a daily basis. Seriously. Like I don't, I'm not getting any ads hardly. I'm not getting hardly any junk mail anymore. Have you guys noticed that? I'm hearing that from across the country, getting very little junk mail. Jay always checks the mail, but we did just get Chad's um, postcard this week and uh, people will be getting one for me tomorrow. So. Yeah. So, so here's what I would say as far as marketing goes. Um, the biggest players, the most serious players are Full, they're, they're double, not maybe not doubling, but they're doubling down on marketing. Right now is the time to get your message out there, especially if you're looking for discounted property. Now, I'm not talking about listings, trying to find listings, trying to find you know buyers and things like that. I'm right. talking about specifically to try to find discounted property. This and Mark Facebook ads are almost at fifty percent off right now. If you're, if you're not on, if you're not, you know, trying to get, you know, trying to get your message across through Facebook, I think that's a huge disservice. Instagram, huge. Um, Google AdWords slash their prices. Okay. Radio has slashed their prices. Okay. Everybody's like, well, we're nobody, everybody's at home. Nobody's even driving. You can lock those rates in for months and months and months. So radio, TV, all these different marketing forms, by the way, I would, I would pick one. Don't try to do everything. Pick one and be great at everything or be great at one thing. But I don't have, I'm not getting any direct mail. I think direct mail to try to find motivated sellers, try to find um, discounted property is still the best and most effective way. And if you're, you can send direct mail at a fraction of the cost as before. And I've got a great resource. Um, if you want, can I, I don't know if I can, if I can say yeah. this, but I've got a great resource that I've been using. It's REI print mail. REIprintmail.com. And if you put in the REI Live discount code, you actually get even a further discount. So make sure you're taking advantage of that. Guys, direct mail to me is the biggest piece. Now, there's some people out there that I'm talking to right now saying, 
look, everybody's at home. So everybody's going to answer their phone. So let's just call them. Let's just cold call people. And I don't do that personally, but I know tons of people who do. And they're, you know, yeah, you're going to have your fair share of people who are going to be hanging up on you, but you have to, you have to figure out what is going on in our marketplace today. Where, where are the eyeballs? Where's the attention? Everybody's on Facebook right now because everybody's bored. So if it were me, it's direct mail, it's Facebook ads, it's, it's cold calling. And those are like the three top forms of marketing where let's, Hey, let's just call and let's have a conversation. I think, again, I said this earlier, I think as a realtor, you have a huge advantage. You're not just calling to ask someone to sell their property at, you know, at 30 cents on the dollar, you're actually calling them and saying, Hey, that's an option. That option is on the table, right. but we can also help you list the property. And I think right now, the number one people, the number one group to go after right now, if you're going to market for motivated sellers to find, try to find discounted properties, is landlords. People who are landlords, this, this is what we call non-owner occupied property. People that own a property, but they don't live in it. This is where you're going to find the most stress and distress. You got, you're talking about landlords who don't know if they're going to get paid rent next month. Right. And that is a huge stress point and burden to these people. So you can go get these lists. These lists are, they're everywhere. You can get these lists everywhere. And we can talk about that if you want to, but start sending mail, start calling people, get on Facebook, start putting these at, double down on your Just marketing. do something. <laughs> Jenny, Jenny and Gusty, I am so sick. Of, of going through my Facebook feed and seeing I'm so bored. And the meme I just saw yesterday was, well, I already watched all of Netflix. What now? So it's like, it's like people are so bored. It's like, it's, and these are realtors. These are investors. These are people who are in the business. Get off your butt. Get off for five now seconds. is the time. Right. If you're not doubling down on your efforts now, what you're never going to. Right. This is the time to make money. And, and, and I'm just so sick. I agree. Um, Bring I'm, it. I'm sick of it. This is the time to do it. So what are you doing? Get off your butt. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. Sorry. Wow. I love it. I love it. No, you're right. Hey, what was that? Um, what was that discount code for REI print? Mail? It's REI live. And so I don't know if you can see it, but um, I'm real estate investing live is my company. Um, we do live events. Now we're doing live webinars and live, um, <laughs> you know, going live, you know, uh, almost every day. But um, REI right. live is the discount code for 10% off. Well, yeah. I got so, a bright pink um, uh, postcard at my house, and that led to from uh, an investor, and that led to him buying one of my rental properties. And we were so happy to get it, and it's an ugly postcard. But one thing that um, uh, a lot of realtors don't understand is that um, uh, when it's pretty, a lot of times the effectiveness goes down. And um, that's why the bright yellow postcard or a bright, um, you know, hot pink postcard works because it stands out. And the message is not about the graphic. The message is about, you know, how you uh, uh, use your words, <laughs> the copy. <laughs> yeah, I think when it comes to marketing, um, one of the most important things that you can do, and Jenny, you're a marketer. You're a great marketer, by the way. Um, one of the most important things and probably the only thing that matters truly because everything else feeds off this one thing is testing. You have to test and you have to continue to test. Don't just, ju just send out the, the glossy, beautiful. You can do that, but test it. What are the results? Now send out a, a bland, you know, you mentioned the yellow postcards with black type. We were, we were one of the first ones to do that here in Birmingham back in 2012, 13, 14. Now everybody's doing it. The pink, the hot pink ones came out about three or four or five years ago. So just test, see what's working. Um, get a list, start calling people. Is that working? What's my ROI? What's my, what's my return on my time there? Um, do some direct mail, do some Facebook ads, try to test and see what is working and what you enjoy the best and then just do it and just go. I love it for sure. Yeah. Hey, what, so how are you? Um, I know I, I'm seeing a bunch of it, but you know, some people that might not follow you, how are you personally taking action, you know, in this change of a market? Yeah. So my core business is live events and we can't do live events. So that's, if you're now, 
most people are just going to sit back and just woe is me. I'm just trying to be as proactive as I can. We're doing weekly webinars that, that we're attracting, you know, hundreds of people literally. And it's, and it's been incredible. Um, and we're trying to go live on Facebook and trying to get the message out as much as we can um, to, Hey, and, and I'm literally calling it the current state of real estate and it's changing every day. So we have, we all have a new guest on and it's like new series of questions every day. Like what's happening today? What's going on? What can we do differently? Um, so I'm, Gusty, I've spent the last three or four years of my life doing nothing but building relationships. I've been building equity with people for three to four years, not asking them for anything, just giving as much as I possibly can. You asked me specifically, what am I doing today? Well, today I am calling people. I am on the phone continuing to build my relationships, asking how I can help these people in these time in these times and how maybe they could help me too. So I'm building, I'm building yeah. um, businesses. I'm building business relationships. We're I'm going into business, starting different things with different people right now, because I've built up all that relationship equity over these years. And, and everyone was like, Oh, so I wrote this book called nothing's for sale. I was literally giving everything away. I gave it all away. And why did I do it's that? On my coffee I, table. I did that for a time such as this, because you, if, when you start to build relationships with people and just give and give and give and give and give, there comes a time when you can, you have permission now to ask. And I've built up so much equity where if I do have a need and there's one specific thing that I'm really moving towards right now, I can't talk about it right now, but I'm really moving towards right now. And I'm doing that with a partner that someone who I look up to tremendously and is one of the absolute industry leaders. And I'm the only reason I'm able to do that is because of the relationship equity I've built up over all these years. So that's what I'm doing specifically. If you want to know about me. Yeah. I love that. You know, it's, um, you know, it's, it's building that equity in the business relationship account. And uh, there's a, there's a few folks that talk about that. I love that you're doing that right now. I just love how you're open and your willingness to help out. And I believe in this industry, whether, you know, from the investment side, from the, the realtor side, whatever side, I believe we all have to be uh, in collaboration. I believe we all have to work with each other. Um, if we're doing that, it just makes so much, you know, makes things so much easier. And, you know, it's just a lot easier doing business with people that, you know, like and trust. And um, and so I love that you're doing that right now. So um, I always appreciate listening to everything that you're producing. And um, and I always appreciate you inviting me to be on uh, on the different discussions yeah. that you're having. So that's awesome. I appreciate yeah, it. Thank you, Gusty. Appreciate it. And you really have made what, an uh, effort. And yeah, go ahead. The past few years, and uh, I, I'm just grateful that um, you know I've been able to uh, build a relationship with you too, and and meet some of your folks and connect with some of your folks, and um, you always bring tremendous value everywhere you go. So I appreciate that from you. Yeah, thank you. That's been that's been my goal because I, I, I just know, and someone just yeah. made a comment that that you have to give to get, and and I think that's one of the, like the foundational principles of life. You have to be willing to give. And, you know, I've been following Gary Vaynerchuk for a very long time, for almost 10 years. Well, one of his quotes I heard very early on was he, his goal is to be 51% of every relationship that he's in. 51%. That means you're giving more than you're getting. And if you can just ha carry that mantra, which I have for probably the past seven, eight years, just, just in all that I do, how can I give? How can I outgive other people? I want to give more than I receive because it's going to come back to you anyway. Okay. For sure. Yeah. All right. So, so somebody that's um, considering investing in real estate, maybe, you know, haven't, um, they've been sitting on the sideline for a while wanting to be an investor. What would you say to somebody that wants to either flip houses or, you know, buy for, uh, for a rental? How would you get started right now? The, so I just, I just got off the phone with someone last night and, and kind of asked me the same question. How would you get started right now? Well, I think there are two things that kind of go hand in hand that you have to do first. And maybe you, and maybe we can talk about what to do after that. But the very first two things you need, number one, you got to network. You got to meet people. You need to meet as many people as you can. I know obviously today that's difficult, but you can still, you can send me a DM. You could be, you know, you can, we can have virtual meetings. You can, you can, you can virtually meet people. So I still think that that's, that's an important component because 
this business, and I just got done talking about relationships, this business, real estate, probably most businesses are relationship businesses. It, 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 your network is truly your net worth. And it is all about who you know, and not just who you know, but who knows you. And do they, you mentioned know, like, and trust. Do they know you? Do they like you? Because they're not going to do business with you if they don't like you. So you have to, you have to be likable. <laughs> There's a whole chapter in uh, Dale yeah. Carnegie's book about how to win friends and influence people about how to be likable. <laughs> you just have to be likable. That's like the first, the first yeah. thing. So number one is network. And then number two, it kind of goes hand in hand with that is you need to educate yourself. You've got to be on calls like this. But right now, I just got, kind of went on my soapbox a minute ago about now is the time. If you find yourself bored and you've watched all of Netflix already, it is now time to dive into YouTube videos, dive into some podcasts, get on these Facebook lives, get on webinars. Now is the time to educate yourself. Do not invest in anything much less real estate, if you have not educated yourself or partnered with someone who is educated. So that's kind of first and foremost, if someone's brand new and they want to dive in, they need to meet the right people and they need to educate themselves. Okay. Start reading books, anything and everything you can. Beyond that, you say, you know, Brian, I'm kind of beyond that point. I know a lot of people, I have been educating myself. I am ready. I think maybe the question is, is now the, the right time to dive in? Well, I was talking to someone who I respect tremendously yesterday, an industry leader in the real estate investing space. And he thinks, and, and I agree that this is going to be what's going to happen over the next probably nine months for the rest of the year. We're not going to see something like, like I think a lot of the experts initially predicted that the, I'm trying to get my finger in the, there we go. They initially <laughs> predict because it's backwards. So, so they initially predicted it was going to come, wait, come down and then go back up. Okay. never mind. I can't do it. It's backwards. <laughs> I'm going to pitch you on there by yourself. That's then. very, that's very difficult to do, but it's almost going to be like a V it was going to go down and come straight back up. And now experts are saying that that's actually not what's going to happen. It's going to, it's going to go down and it's going to stay down and then it's going to come back up. So you're going to have, my point is you're going to have time. You don't need to feel like right now is the time. Um, I don't know what happened to everybody. I don't know if we're still alive. You're there. <laughs> okay. We, but right now is the time. <laughs> she put you on the screen so you could but do it's your backwards. Uh, so you could do your ma uh, magic graph. Okay, yeah. <laughs> but now is the now is not necessary. Don't feel like like right now you you're gonna miss the boat. Like like with stocks, I think that that might be the case with stocks. I don't know. I'm not a stock guy, but I think with stocks, you're gonna see it could be it's going to be a lot quicker. Real estate doesn't just doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way with real estate. It's going to come down and it's going to be down and you're going to have time. So spend that time that you're going to have is educating yourself, looking at as many deals as you can, making as many offers as you can. Okay. And make them low offers, make them 50%. My, this is my rule. My rule of thumb is I don't even care what it's worth. This is just my rule. I don't care what the yep. property's worth. Whatever you're asking for the property, my offer is 50% of whatever you asked. I don't. I didn't even look and look it up. I didn't look to see what the, the property's worth. I didn't look get an appraisal. Look at the after repaired value. Nothing. If you want two hundred thousand for your property, my offer is automatically a hundred thousand. That's just how I negotiate. That's my business. That's how I do things. So if what what's the harm in making a hundred offers? One of my mentors, or when I first got in this business, told me I need to make five offers a day. Are you making five offers a day at the over the course of thirty days, sixty days? How many offers is that? You're going to get a deal and you're going to get a great deal if you make five offers a day. Okay. So that's, that's probably um, the best advice I can give as far as I can. <laughs> no, I love that. Um, you know, I, it, it's a numbers game uh, as you're saying, you know, I mean, you, you make your money uh, on yes. the purchase side of things is what I've seen. And so if you are able to, produce those offers and you're going to find somebody that is willing to pull the trigger. And, um, and especially in this time, they're ready to move on. They don't want to do it. Like you were saying earlier, they don't want to have those rents. They don't want to, um, you know, be left holding that bag if their renter is not paying. So I think it's a, a phenomenal opportunity. right? Cause now. Gusty, listen, like almost I mean, I would say, I'm just guessing, definitely the vast majority of people who have rental property, there's a loan on that property. And when there's a loan on that property, yeah, there might be some stuff in place right now where you can defer some payments and things. But when you have a loan mm -hmm. and you're not getting paid rent, 
and there could still be some, you know, maintenance issues that pop up here and there, what are you going to do? You know, Jenny, you mentioned that you got an Airbnb right right now that's not producing hardly any income, but you still have a mortgage. Mm -hmm. You're still, I understand that that the the banks are willing to work with you right now. How long are they going to be willing to work with you? Right. (laughs) It's scary. It's just a scary time for landlords. And that's why landlords above any other kind of group of people right now, unless they're just very well positioned, Unless they did, unless they did things the right way over the over the past in our bull market over the past ten years, most people did not do things the right way. Go and find those people and have those tough conversations with them, and be. Don't go. Don't. And this is important too. Don't use that opportunity to to try to be to try to attack and try to you know just be hateful and hurtful and try to take advantage of people. You're not taking advantage of people. You're taking advantage of situations and you're, you're a light, be a light in these people's world. Look at it. You have to look at it from that perspective is I want to relieve them of that burden that is on them with that mortgage. So I want to try to give them as much as I can, but I got to make money too. And just have those conversations, be likable and people are going to sell you their properties at deep discounts. Yep. Totally agree. Um, I know I'm not able to see Jenny. Jenny, are you still on? Oh yeah, I'm here. Are you able to see Jenny? Yeah, I can see you both. I'm surrounded. Okay. I can't see Jenny. So <laughs> cool. Um, what are some, what are some books, um, on real estate investing that you think are, um, I know you're a, you're a huge reader and I think you read like a book a day. It seems like. So what are some of your favorite books that you would recommend? To um, brand, it's going to be super cliche, but brand new to real estate or brand new to real estate investing. Um, it's not even really a real estate investing book. It's more of just learning, understanding how money works kind of book with real estate sprinkled in. There's a book called Rich Dad, Poor Dad. It was written in 1997. So it is a little bit older, but the principles will never go away. And I highly recommend if you have not read that, start there for sure. Um, yeah, there's book. lots of, you know, kind of... Li- Real estate is comprised of so many niches. There's so many different things you could do. You could, there's a hundred different ways to make a million dollars in real estate, if not more. So really beyond, if you understand what niche you want to go into, then just go Google search and try to find a book on that specific niche instead of just trying to um, find out, just read everything and read every niche because you're going to kind of get bogged down because you can't do everything. The people that are most successful at real estate and real estate investing have chosen one niche. And there's a guy in our market. I think I know you guys know very, very well. Matthew Gregory has been the best person that I've ever met in my life at focusing on one thing and not deviating from it. And yeah, recently he's done, you know, bought a building and done some Airbnb stuff as well. And he'll wholesale some stuff every once in a while. But for the most part, for over 20 years, I've never seen someone so focused on only rehabbing and, and flipping properties. That's all he does. He does not get yeah. distracted by all the shiny objects that are out there because there are so many different ways to make money in real estate. Right. So the, you pick one. Pick one. Do not try to do three or four or five things. The person who tries to catch two rabbits catches none. Go after one thing and go after it very, very, very hard. And so you're asking about books. If you know that you want to understand wholesaling more, there's about 30 books on wholesaling, probably more out there on Amazon. I don't know that one is better than another. I think probably YouTube videos and podcasts are going to be better than that. But um, that's if, if you want to learn the tactics of real estate, Go out there and, and do that. You want to learn mindset and different things. You want to talk about books. There's a million out there. Um, I mean, I don't even know that I could. I mean, I'm looking at my shelf and the, the best book I've ever read <laughs> as far as like that stuff goes is, you know, How to Win Friends and Influence People, Dale Carnegie. It's enormous. If you haven't read that classic, you have to go get that because it's all about relationships, all about people. Um, number two, when it comes to sales which I think we're all in sales. I think every human being is on sales because you're all, if you get up in the morning, you take a shower, then you're in sales because you are present. You want to present yourself in a certain light. You're selling you people. Take a shower, but still put your pajamas back on. <laughs> you've still, so at least you took a shower because you took a shower probably because it may be in your case, but you don't want your husband to, Right. I want to see a felon. (laughs) Right. So everybody is in sales. 
So the best book, oh my gosh, this is one of the best books I've ever read in my life. When It's not even a sales book. It's a social, um, it's like a, so, a study on social and sociality is a book called Influence. Influence mm-hmm. by, Rob, uh, by uh, Dr. Robert Cialdini. And it is, it just literally goes through like the social sciences of how to be influential and how to do, and, and it talks very specifically about how to do that for good and talks about persuasion, which is, which is a good thing versus manipulation. Manipulation is the evil twin of persuasion. Right. There's nothing wrong with persuading someone, but when you, when you use these powers or these, these, these tactics for evil, it's manipulation. Don't do that. And it, ta- that book talks about the difference. It's a very dry book. But the, the principles are just like you can literally use these principles to 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 further your career and whatever you want to do. So that's those are probably the best right. ones. Right. No, I love that. And I think the biggest part is the education piece of it is, you know, especially agents. If you do want to be working with uh, the um, the the investors in the market, you need to know exactly the strategies that they use. So that you can be um, uh, truly beneficial for those uh, investors. So, and plus, this is our industry. Why would you not want to invest in real estate yourself? Yeah. Amen. So, that was a couple of things that that just really uh, caught on. Uh, yeah, and, that, and that's uh, Gussie, that's where to, it goes back to networking, and that's where it just goes back to. Hey, you know, I'm a realtor. I don't know anything about wholesaling. I, I maybe I've seen these four or five people that pop up in my feed. I don't even really know who they are. I'm just friends with them. I want to DM them. What is wholesaling? How do you, how do you make money? How do you do what you do? I want to learn more. I want to understand more. Um, And then, Oh, okay. I start to get that. And then you can start to grasp that concept. And this is where you can really and truly as realtors, traditional realtors, it's how you can really and truly help your seller. And, And as I've been saying it and Jenny, you do it, but I don't know many realtors that genuinely want to help their seller. I really don't because if they did, they would give, they would present them with all the opportunities that are available to all the options that are available to them, regardless if I got paid or not. That is someone who's genuinely education. I think that's education though. You know, some people don't know all the options that are out there. True. And that's why I go back to right now, this, in this time, educate yourself, network with people who can help you. You don't, I, I wouldn't necessarily recommend to go get a book. You don't need to read a, a whole book on the subject. Watch a couple of YouTube videos. Talk to a couple of people who are experts in that field. Just DM them and just tell them, hey, I want to learn more about this. What Could you talk to me or could you point me to someone who could or could you point me to a resource? I um, went on a listing appointment months ago. and uh, I don't know if Jenny has a question. I can't oh. see her for here. <laughs> yeah, I'm at, he doesn't know, but I'm asking you a question. But um I went on a listing appointment months ago and been working uh, over time uh, with this lady. And she said that her neighbor had made an offer on her house. Um, uh, and she said it was so low. It was ridiculous. Is Jenny so, asking you a question? So we were um, moving through the process. And, you know, I worked with her for months, getting the house ready, hiring people to go over there, having photographers in, stagers in, lists, going by the house several times. And then I I went to ask her right before we put it on the market, how much did he offer you? And uh, she told me and I said, oh, you need to call him today, today and take that because that's going to be a better situation for you. And uh, of course, I didn't make anything on that because he was a realtor and he called me and he said, are you for real? And I said, this is the best thing for her. This is what is the right thing to do. Um, and so it, it is asking the right questions. I could have asked that a lot earlier <laughs> instead of months, but um, you know, it is figuring out what is, it's not what's best for us. It's what's best for our client. But Jenny, there are ways for you to still get paid in that scenario. No, I understand. But in that scenario, um, investor, realtor, neighbor um, with that whole, I just backed out of it because that was best for her. Um, If I had, uh, here's another thing that we get a bad rap for when we have not done any work at all. And then all of a sudden we're in the middle of something and people don't appreciate it. Consumers don't appreciate it. Um, uh, so sometimes it's just best to say, Hey, this is what's good for you. Go get it. Yeah, no, I agree. I I think that that you have to, um, you have to be willing to do what is right. 
Yes. And, and a lot of times there, no paycheck comes with that. Right. And you have to be okay with that because it's going to come back to you. It yeah. will come back to you. Maybe not with that one person, but it will come back to you. And you, when you operate in that kind of integrity and that is your life and you just, you're not just like putting out like the, I just want to kind of do it as a strategy. That's your life. That's how you operate. The yeah. opportunities that will come your way will be endless. I agree. My husband's doing fun stuff back here. <laughs> He, he heard it was Brian, so he was like, oh, I want to hear. <laughs> Tell him to jump in here. I got some questions for him. We need to get him on, on my, my podcast. I, want to ask I know. Questions. Yeah, he needs to be on yours. <laughs> so, well, um, I think, you know, we, we've had a really good talk and uh, 55 minutes in and uh, you're just always such a, a wealth of information and you, you share and, and give and thank you so much for it. As you know, what kind of how can people reach your podcast, you know? Talk, talk to us. Yeah, right. Like right now I'm putting, I'm going live on Facebook. So if you're not friends with me on Facebook or follow me on, I'm almost at the friend limit, but follow me on Facebook for sure. Do that because we're going live on Facebook almost every day. We're going live today at three o'clock central time with someone who predicted a fina financial crisis in 2020. We're going to go live with him um, at three o'clock on my, my personal Facebook page. We do weekly webinars on Saturday nights from seven to eight 30 PM. Uh -huh. If that's something you're interested in, just shoot me a DM. Um, follow me on Instagram at Brian J trip. Um, our YouTube channel is really blowing up. We're putting tons of content right now. I'm doing more content than I've done because I've got time to do it. <laughs> yeah. And I'm not, I don't even have, t I have a TV, but I don't have cable. I don't have Netflix. I don't have any of that stuff. My kids have Disney plus, but like, I'm not watching Disney plus. Like I, there's no sports to watch. I'm a sports guy. There's no sports to watch. I am all in on delivering content. I'm doing deals. Um, I'm talking to as many people as I can. Um, I'm doing interviews. I'm conducting interviews. I'm working out like crazy as well. This is the and time a beard. and I'm growing a beard. <laughs> Um, this is the time to better yourself from all aspects. Be a better family person. Be uh, Get into some books. Watch some videos. Educate yourself. Work out. Take care of your body. Eat healthy. Uh, everybody's, most for the most part, is having to eat in now. So hopefully we're eating healthy. Like all these things, this is the time to better yourself and prepare yourself. Get a plan together for when this stuff, when we can get out and, and do things. Get a plan together right now. Write it out. A goal that is not written down is not a goal. It's a wish. So write it out. Write out what you're going to do and get ready for what's about to happen. There's going to be so much opportunity. Nobody loses money, guys. There's going to be so much money transferred out of one, one thing to another thing. The, there's the same amount of money in the marketplace. So where is that money and how can you get a hold of that money, especially as realtors? Realtors have an unbelievable opportunity right now. And I literally just, I just got done talking to a realtor, a traditional realtor. And she's like, I don't know what to do right now. I'm bored. I don't, I, I don't have anything to do. And it's like, I just can't wrap my mind. If you're bored right now and you don't know what to do, you've got to figure out a plan, figure out something, stop watching Netflix and figure out a plan to take advantage of this transfer of wealth that is happening right now and is going to continue to happen for the next three, six, nine months. Well, Sorry. you got us fired up, man. If you're Third not hard over. to go out and, and grow today, my goodness, what's it going to take? So. <laughs> Thank you so much for being with us today, Brian. Thanks, Jenny. Um, Thanks, everybody, Go look at his um, uh, page, join his webinars, um, uh, uh, get to know Brian because he will definitely enrich your life. So thanks again. Thanks, guys.